Welcome back to the Turtle Wins the Race home-based business podcast. My name is Kara Bunton, and I have run a home-based business since 1999, which is almost 25 years, 25 years? Yes, almost 25 years ago at this point. It's close to it, so wow. When I first started, I was selling wedding cakes. So I was doing custom wedding cakes. It wasn't online. I had a website, but I wasn't selling cakes online per se. I don't know what my hair is doing. If you are watching this, I apologize for the light. But I had the I have a shade thing up to block the light. It's coming in and making me look totally orange, like an oompa loompa, which I didn't really need. It wasn't it wasn't attractive. So the light's a little bit dark. I have everything blocked off. Just just an FYI. Now let's get back to the topic though, which for today is diversification. And I know everybody's like, oh my god, diversification. Yeah, look, it it's really really important, even if you only focus on one business. Let's say that you have one business. That's it. You don't want to do a YouTube channel. You don't want to do anything else. You just want to have that one business. It's important to be able to get traffic from more than one place. I think it's important to sell that product, whatever you're making in that business in more than one place, because you want to spread out your risk. And you know, no no job is without risk. You can go to work in an office for 30 years and get fired tomorrow because they're downsizing. You can have the a part-time job that is eliminated, whatever. There, there's nothing that's 100% sure in life. Death and taxes, I know. But as far as work goes, it, everything comes with risk. So if you're working for yourself, it's a little riskier. You have to kind of go out and get customers all the time. When I was doing wedding cakes, it was like that. We didn't have a lot of repeat customers for wedding cakes. There were some, unfortunately, but in general, people came to you, they bought a cake and you never saw them again. So one thing that wedding cake, cust- wedding cake sellers used to do, if we were a wedding cake business, you could make birthday cakes. You could also do, um, you could do like a weekly special for people where they would order just dessert cakes ahead of time and then you would deliver them all on Friday or whatever. There's a lot of things you can do as a wedding cake business to kind of mitigate your risk. It's the same thing if you're selling online. There are a lot of things you can do to mitigate your risk. And I think it's really, 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 really important that people think about this. Even if you're you're resistant to it, even if you don't want to sell on multiple platforms at this point, you really need to think about this because you don't want to be the person who when Etsy changes their algorithm a little bit and that's the only place that you sell, all of a sudden you're not even visible in search results. You don't want that to happen to you. If you have more than one place where you're selling, then at least maybe those other places didn't change their algorithm on the same day that Etsy changed theirs. It's it's just so important for a an artist or a creative who is selling products that they are making to have more than one stream of income. Now I know that this, you know, talking about streams of income and diversification is very, it, it, I won't say it's trendy because we've been talking about this for decades, but it's, it's something that is talked about a lot in marketing circles and in business circles because it's important. It's important. And I know a lot of people also are very resistant to it because it's a time thing. Honestly, it just, it comes down to time. How much capacity do you have? to run businesses like the same, sell the same product in five different places, do different businesses in different places. There's only a certain amount of time in the day. And there's only a certain amount of mental capacity that people have to do this. And I, I understand that. When I first started my wedding cake business, my kids were, let me think, my kids were three, no, five months old and three years old. Luckily, I had a husband who could be here on the weekends while I was delivering cakes, right? So there, it was a different work-life balance back then. Things change as your life changes. My kids today, like I said, that was 25 years ago. So my kids are both grown and out of the house. They have their own lives. I, I only had these two stupid cats to look after, you know, so I have different babies now. But it's not the same amount of work, right? So if you are in a position where you are taking a care of a family, you have young kids, and you don't have as much time, then be gentle with yourself and just say, look, 
it's not time for me to run five different types of businesses and do 10 different types of things. Maybe in five years it will be, right? Maybe in 10 years it'll be, you'll be in a totally different place with the time that you have to work. At that point, you might not want to do it. So that's a different question. But don't feel that you have to match up to someone else's expectations. That's the first thing. When I'm saying you need to diversify, you need to think about how you can add something else that's not going to stress you out too much. If you're in that position where you already have a lot of responsibilities that you have to deal with, and it, it doesn't have to be kids. I know that a lot of women who are my age and a little older are probably dealing with elderly parents. And I know that there are people in my eShop program who are in this situation. I was in this situation about 10, maybe seven or eight years ago, 10 years ago, when my husband's parents moved here, we brought them here because they were both elderly and they needed to be in a nursing home. And I was the one who took care of them, you know, their medical appointments and stuff. It wasn't like I was hands on with them all day, but I was the one since I worked from home who had the most flexibility to you know, take care of them. So, you know, you, you're going to have different challenges at different points in your life, but you need to think about how you can work things in to bring in that extra stream of income just as a backup, if nothing else. And if it's something that brings you a little extra money right now that you don't need, just put it in the bank, put it away. And if it's something that is stressing you out so much, don't do it. This is this is basically what basically what I'm saying. Everybody needs diversification, but there might be times when you just can't handle it for whatever reason. Whatever's going on in your life, it's too much. And that's fine. Just wait. Do it later. You don't have to do everything at once. There will be time. And sometimes if you never get around to something, it's something that you didn't need to do anyway. So for example, let's say that you keep hearing me say, you need your own website, you need your own website. I, th I really believe that. I really do believe that you need your own website. However, if you don't have the mental bandwidth to sell on Etsy, have your own website, develop that website, do the SEO for it, then put that aside for now or just don't do it at all. If all you want to do is sell on Etsy, that's fine. That's perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with that. This is not a matter of right and wrong. This is doing what you can do at the time in your life that you have to do it. You know what I mean? So as I'm talking, don't feel like I'm telling you this is what you have to do. Everybody's path is different. Everybody's life is different. I do, however, think that it is really, really important to mitigate your risk. All right. So one way that you can do that, if you make things yourself, is you can also sell patterns. You know, I mean, it doesn't have to be something that you're doing that's so completely different from what you're already doing, but it just kind of targets a different audience. It targets a different group. You could also, like I said, start your own website because that way if something does happen on Etsy, you can be building traffic to your website and not worry about Etsy so much. And there are people, and there's one person, I'm, you know who I'm talking about, Maria, I'm talking about you, that she said she got a couple, she started a website, got a couple of sales on there, and she said it felt so good to know that she doesn't have to rely on Etsy 100%. And that's the point. You don't want to have to rely on one thing 100%, regardless of what it is. You need to have different things in place to kind of bring income in from different places so that you don't have to rely on one thing because you don't know if that one thing's going to be there. And like I said, there's risk everywhere. You can get fired from a regular job. Etsy can change the algorithm. You just don't know. One thing that I would suggest, uh, there's a lot of things I would suggest. I would suggest number one, getting your own website. And I, I've, I know I harp on this. I harp on it, but it's important because your website is a home for your business that no one can take away from you. Unless you do something spammy and illegal and your web host shuts you down, right? But that doesn't generally happen unless you're a total scammer, which I hope none of you are. So your website is your property. You don't have to follow anyone else's rules as far as you know what you can list on it. You don't have to follow, um, well, you might, I mean, you, there's certain there's certain guidelines that every web host or every service like Shopify or uh, Square, any, any of those website services, they all have things that you can't list. And it's generally, again, things that I would hope that none of you are selling. Just be aware of that. And you don't want to get into that kind of business anyway. 
illegal stuff. You know what I mean. Um, but you know, as long as you're just selling your own products, your handmade products, then you're, you can sell whatever you want on your website and you don't have to worry so much about anybody else telling you what to do. You can also start a YouTube channel and I know everybody's going to go, Oh my God, no, I don't want to do a video. Look, you don't really have to do video where you are on camera. This for me is normal. Now I did not used to like being on camera. I don't, I still don't like it, but it's a lot easier to be on camera than you think once you get used to it and you might actually enjoy it. You might actually like it. So give it a try. If you don't want to be on camera at first, that's fine. There are ways that you can show your products without your face being in the camera you're on screen. You can, you know, show things on a table, go and look at some like cake decorating videos where people are decorating cakes in general, their face isn't there. You know, they're showing their hands with the cake, uh, things where people are doing crafts like journaling, uh, junk journaling, scrapbooking, anything where they're working on a surface. A lot of the time their faces aren't even in the video, maybe at the beginning and the end, if at all, but there are ways that you can do a YouTube channel that will support your business. It doesn't have to be you showing how to make the things that you make because that's your proprietary information. But you can do things that show people how to use your products. You can do things that show people how to style your, style your products. Let's say that you make jewelry. You could do a YouTube channel showing how to wear the jewelry that you make with different outfits. There are a lot of things that you can do. And YouTube is full of, <laughs> YouTube is full of so much. There are so many things that YouTube has on it that you would not even think were on it. So just go and do a search for the type of thing that you sell and see what comes up. It might give you some ideas, but having a YouTube channel is a really, really good way to send people to a website or an Etsy shop if you don't want a website, but it's another footprint online. You basically want to make as many footprints online as you can that will all lead people back to your business. And you know, if, if you're getting in the, you know, the Etsy does their annual, oh, here's, here's the top keywords that brought people to your shop. And Google does the same thing with Search Console. It'll show you the keywords that people searched in Google to come to your business. What you want is to see your business name pretty much at the top of that list. You want people to type your business name into the search bar to find you because that's a brand search and that shows that they know who you are. Because most of the people that you will run across online have never heard of your business. We are very small fish in a very big pond. So if people are actually searching your business by name, that's really good. And that shows that you are doing the work to get the business name out there and that people are listening. So that's good. Um, but as far as income goes, there are a lot of things that you can do to make extra income. The first, the easiest way is just to sell on multiple platforms. So that's, that's pretty easy. Uh, the, the other thing I said was like doing tutorials. I know some people in my eShop program have started Patreons where people will pay them monthly for kits or something like that, that they put together. There is, you can have a membership. I have a monthly membership, but it's for traffic. It's like a Google slash Etsy SEO traffic, like getting people to your website or to your YouTube channel or wherever you want them to go. That's what we talk about in my monthly membership. I also have classes that I put up on Pinterest because I know how to do Pinterest. So if there's a skill that you know how to do and you can teach people how to do that, find a platform where you can teach a class and you can earn a little extra money that way. So there, there are a lot of things that anybody, I would say anybody who makes things with your hands, you have skills that you can teach. So don't say, oh, there's nothing I can teach people that hasn't been done 90 times already. That might be true, but people want to see your perspective and they want to see how you do it. That's, it's not like they just want to see it done. They want to see how you do it. Cause you might have a way to do things that is a little bit different and it makes it easier for someone. You, again, don't give away all of your tips. Don't give away the whole, you know, don't give away everything, but you can teach people things and get them familiar with your business and then have them come over and buy from you. And I've seen a lot of, for example, like ceramicists, like people who are making bowls and pots and things like that, they'll make the thing on the YouTube video and then they list it in their shop. And by the time the YouTube video has been up for a few days, it's sold because someone saw it being made on YouTube and they went over and bought it. So YouTube is a really good way to get people to your shop. That's a little bit of diversification. 
And if you get enough subscribers, you can earn ad money from YouTube. It's not gonna be a lot, okay? Another way that I earn money is I do the classes, I do the YouTube. I also do a, websites. I have diff, separate websites that have ads on them from Google and I use affiliate links. So you can apply to be an affiliate for different companies and put those links in your website blog and get some money that way. And you know, it's not a lot. All of these things kind of are, you know, some, some things earn more than others on a monthly basis. It's not a whole lot in one place. Some people earn a lot depending on what you're doing on YouTube, but the, ty the types of videos that I make are not get rich quick videos. And that seems to be what gets the most views. So I'm never going to make a full-time income on YouTube, but I make a decent amount of money. And then I make a decent amount of money from the affiliate stuff. I make a decent amount of money from a few other things and it all adds up. So just for the new year, cause I'm recording this in December, think about where you can diversify your income for next year, because it's really important, like I said, and if you have all of those things that bring in just a little bit extra, then that will give you the ability to make an emergency fund and put some stuff in savings, maybe pay a few extra bills, get ahead on your credit card payments, pay off your mortgage. There's a lot of things you can do with a little extra money coming in every month. It's not that hard to set these things up. And there are enough options that you should be able to find something that fits into your life and your time that you have available to do it. So give this video a thumbs up. I was going to say subscribe to the channel. If you don't want to, that's fine. That's okay. But subscribe if you do, because I talk about this kind of stuff every week. Um, leave any questions that you have under the video, and I will talk to you next week.